Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is gonna be a fun one because this is the Lynx X-Terrain RE. It's the 900 Ace R engine, the turbo engine, and we're gonna do a complete walk around review, but the website for this unit has something interesting. They talk about it being family friendly. So that's one of the pieces that we're gonna look at. We're not just gonna do a walk around where we look at sort of the specs and make it kind of boring. Can't promise it won't still be boring, but we are gonna talk about how those specs make it real for you and what the differences that it makes. Now, what's cool about this is this is part of the BR lineup, but it's different than a Skidoo lineup. It's the only four stroke in really its class in the uh, BRP lineup, but it has a lot of advantages of having things like the link accessories and that kind of thing. So that's part of what we're going to talk about in this review. Now, I've always been very clear. Most of this channel is motorcycle based. I'm not the perfect expert on these things, but here's the deal I make with all of our viewers. If you have questions about this unit, I'm filming here at Extreme Torque Motorsports at their Fredericton location, and they are absolutely awesome. And if you have any questions, even if it's things that I don't know, I will find out for you and I'll make sure that we get it back on uh, the channel, whether it's through extra videos, because they give me complete access to their entire vehicle lineup. So if you have questions, let me know in the comments below, make sure you subscribe, and I'll get back to you with answers both in the comment section and in future videos. So let's get going with this review. So let's just place this within the class. Like I said, on the website, they call this sort of a trail type unit, but it is a trail, on trail, off trail. And it says that again, right on the website. And then it says that family fun thing. So as we talk about all those things, let's keep in mind that this is sort of a top of the line, high spec unit. Now it doesn't have the big touchscreen dash that some of the other BRP lineup things have, but it does have a whole bunch of little features that make it kind of unique in the class. So first of all, it's very, very trail capable. We're going to talk about suspension. We're going to talk about how the skis are a little bit different than anything else in the Skidoo lineup with the Lynx lineup. We're going to talk about extra support and strength pieces on this unit and that's really the key thing is that it has quite a lot on here as far as performance but also performance that gives you some fun so where some sleds will push those skis down and try to keep those skis you know drilled in for perfect steering this one's going to allow a little bit more wheelie a little bit more hooligan a little bit more fun to that so it's going to allow a different kind of ride but again it's going to allow you for a large variety of riding even though it's a trail unit you can certainly go off trail on trail and have some fun with it. So let's take a look at the front, we'll work our way through and we'll work our way back to the dash. So the first thing we have to look at is the skis out front here. They're labeled, they're branded Blade XC uh, Plus. So what you have here is something that's a little different than other uh, Skidoo products where they usually have a little bit more curvature to the actual um, ski itself. This one has more curvature in the keel. So there is a little bit different style here. Uh, even though a lot of these parts are sort of shared with um, other BRP products, there is some uniqueness with the links over here. As we look up from the ski, we're gonna see something else that's pretty cool let's show you that right now so moving up you can see the linkages and components this one is labeled links right there so again custom components to the branding here and then you have what is really the piece that makes it stand out as far as when we talk about this being a family friendly unit, this thing can do just about anything and it really comes down to the suspension. So let's talk about what we have for suspension here. First of all, one thing that doesn't show up on camera is the overall size of some of the components in here. You've just got a beefy shocks in here and then it's got the piggyback shocks, the uh, 45 Pro HLCR uh, there, but the piggyback shocks is really the key piece here. And what you have is the anything with piggyback shocks, the reason you have that is because as you're compressing and going up and down, you're gonna create some heat. What this does, it takes the heat and puts it over here, and that allows you to have a very consistent performance in the shocks. What that means is as you're zipping up and down a rough terrain, uh, whether it's a big jump or just small ripples, this thing is gonna take all that heat and it's gonna allow you to have a very consistent performance. So you've got preload adjustability up here. You've also got adjustability over here and down at the bottom of the shock as well. So you've got fully adjustable shocks, preload, rebound, and I'm on the wrong angle to film another red knob that is right behind here. Uh, so reload, preload, uh, rebound and compression, all of it's fully adjustable. And again, even if you're not into adjusting your shocks, what this does is allow you to have a performance sled one moment and a comfort sled the next. And when we talk about that family fun, adjustable suspension can really be a piece of that. Uh, you can adjust it to the seasons, the type of snow and terrain you have, but also the type of riding that you want to do. So if you want to have one person get on and be real aggressive, you can do that. And if you have another person want to go on and go real uh, casual and comfortable, you can do that as well with these, uh, this suspension setup. Now I want to point out the suspension is not just in the front here, we're gonna take a look underneath the sled and you'll see the same style shocks exactly underneath the sled. 
So taking a look underneath the sled, I'll be honest, I normally work with a tripod or a steady cam, but I just don't, can't get that on the angle here. So there's underneath the sled, there's one exact same design, and then you look at the other shock over here, and again, you have the exact same design with the piggyback over there. Hard to kind of get the angle there, but you can see the piggyback shock as well. So front and rear suspension, all of it quality, quality stuff and fully adjustable. Again, allowing you to tailor that ride. While we're here, let's take a look at some extra strength pieces here. You can see extra uh, strengthening through that track there. And again, this is going to allow you to get up on that wheelie area. This is a 16 inch wide track. So not as wide as like a 20 inch touring, but an inch wider than some of the 15 inch tracks out there. So it's allowing you, allowing you to get a lot of traction, put a lot of power to the ground. And this thing definitely has power with that uh, four stroke turbo engine it's uh you know a powerhouse that allows you to have some fun taking a look just above the track you also have some more uniqueness with this unit so first of all just about everything from brp is going to have a link system that's the l i n q not the l y n x so link versus links that link system is going to allow you to take all kinds of components and the thing with brp is whether it's a snowmobile whether it's a spider like a motorcycle a three-wheel motorcycle whether whatever it is even some of their boats and stuff uh, and your sea dues and that kind of thing the link system is consistent across platforms which means that if someone's designed a cargo thing for like i said for a spider or for a riker or something like that one of those three-wheel motorcycles even some of those components will fit on the snowmobiles so the thing with the link components here is that they are very very cross-platform so there's so many accessories in the brp lineup that fit onto here whether it's a rear seat whether it's cargo whether it's gas cans whatever you want to put on here you have that link system but what i like about this lynx unit is you have this rear bumper now there's some benefits to this uh, that sort of don't show up you could throw on a hitch uh, here as well so if you want to take an extra sled behind you uh, something to uh, take your gear with you you can do that which allows you of course to use this for seating or something else and then you just have this regular as it wraps around here just regular tie down areas that you could use for absolutely anything just strapping things down with bungee cords or something else. So there's a lot of practicality here. Not that you couldn't use bungee cords here, but just tie downs everywhere. So whether you're using the official branded link system or whether you're um, using something else, just want to strap things down on your own, you've got a ton of options on the sled to do that. Now, if it feels like we're skipping the rider's seat, that's because we are. We'll get to that in a second here. But as we look at where the rider's going to put their feet, there's a lot of things that I really like as well. First of all, you've got something that sort of levels out your feet here, this little plate. Now, that's something that could be added. I should point out there's no options on this unit. This thing comes fully equipped. So while you can add these in other units, it gives you a level place. So especially as you're standing up, I don't know if you can, can't tell that I'm standing or sitting probably from the angle you're shooting on, but whether you're standing or not, you have the ability to be leveled out there. And then you also have the ability to to yank on over here as you lean your body over onto the far side. And you can use this to really lean that sled left and right. So you can be really actively involved when you ride this and also feel secure in staying on the unit, keeping your legs exactly where you want them and just being comfortable. You don't have that constant sort of sliding down, uh, you know, the uh, track, your level here and uh, can put your feet where you want them. So just nice little features built in, things you don't think about that you do appreciate on the trail. So as we work our way up to the seat, first of all, everything in the BRP lineup, every snow machine out there uh, has great um, you know, padding here for comfort. Now, of course, there's so much padding here that it really just allows you to have padding, not just for comfort, but also for landing a jump or something like that. What you will notice here though, is that it is quite narrow over here. That's gonna allow you to keep your legs there as you're leaning one way or the other. Uh, you're gonna have really good control. You're, you know, you don't feel like the seat is in your way, but it does widen significantly to where you're gonna put your rear end and that gives you a lot of comfort and space. So again, it's more of a racing style seat, but it does give you that width at the back there which is really something you can use again harder to show on camera but hopefully you can sort of see what i'm meaning uh, by just you know throwing it on screen here before we take a look at the dash, let's just take a good look at the front end of this unit. So first thing I want to point out is what you see right in the middle of your screen, kind of the bumper on this. Again, branded links. Instead of just having the single, uh, you know, pole out here, you do have an extra bit of crash bar. It reminds me a lot of an ATV or something like that. So if you're out there in really aggressive, you know, kind of, you know, stump areas or anything like that, where there's something that you've got to climb over that maybe you're not seeing, you have a little extra protection right out there. Also, there is the little turbo label in the center of your screen there. We'll just zoom in so a second you can see that. That turbo label is on the 
top of the fin, not on the front. That's why it's a little bit hard to see right there. We'll zoom back out here and then you've got sort of the, you know, quite attractive face here. You've got kind of a cool look here where the uh, suspension of course comes out. You've got the piggyback shocks kind of hanging out there. Uh, I don't know. I just, I think it's got a, you know, good looking face here. You've got the uh, headlights right there. And then you do have a windscreen on this that's going to give you sort of like a mid-rise windshield. So it's going to give you just enough protection uh, to keep you warm. And the other thing I want to point out here is, again, we're down looking up, but you can sort of see those uh, hand guards. Mostly, they are mostly clear. We're going to film them from the other side as well. And the big difference they make is they allow you to see those skis while giving you good protection. So let's take a look from the driver's area now and uh, sort of take an opposite view of where we are right now. So I'm filming with a wide angle view that's gonna skew the edges of this unit just uh, a little bit, but it does give you a little bit more of a realistic view of what it's like to sit right where I am. So again, you've got this handle here and kind of gives you a realistic view of, I'm looking directly through this to see the dash there. We'll turn the dash on a little bit. But the other thing I wanna talk about when you're looking directly through is, remember I talked about those handguards. First of all, the handguards are really, really big. And again, I come from more of a motorcycle world than a snowmobile world, uh, but you see these on adventure bikes and what the real important piece about these is, is first of all, they're very large, giving you full coverage, but they block none of your view. You can see that the camera is focusing on the, um, the panel here as opposed to on the ski. My eyes can sort of refocus themselves down to the ski, but you can completely see where that ski is right over there, and you can completely see where that ski is right over there. So again, I'm trying to give you essentially the view that I have here. It's a little different looking with a camera with one eye when you've got two eyes, uh, but you do have some advantages there. That mid-rise windshield, there kind of comes up it's going to take some of the snow out but again your view is completely clear and completely um, oops let's just go wide angle completely wide open view there so you've got a pretty good uh, view of everything you need to see from this driver's area of course let's look at some of the controls here as well uh, we'll just turn it to the on position yeah there we go bringing it on you can see the dash let's just zoom right into that for a second there so basic controls here sort of orange backlit uh, you've got the uh, trip computers over on the side um, or sorry in the cycling through there trip computers over on the one side there um, tack on the or sorry fuel <laughs> boy I'm looking through the camera when I should be looking at the dash so fuel gauge on the left speedometer or tack in the middle speedometer on the left as well so let's try that again fuel gauge speedometer tack and then on the right side is your temperature gauge there as well you've got a clock down there right, right now it's in the 24 hour clock and then you've got your warning lights along the bottom which uh, you can see none of them are currently lit right now so um, you know I kind of like this dash I know they have that TFT display which is probably a little bit more legible a little more fancy looking but this works really really well and then the one thing you can't see let's just go to a normal uh, zoom in so this is sort of the traditional view you'd have not the wide angle not the zoomed in but you do have a nice little storage space up there where you can put your phone put your other things up in there as well i believe there's a usb port uh there is a port down there what does it say let's just open it up here that is two usb ports down there so two usb ports at the front end of that so that's going to keep your phone in there keep it charged again i'm filming with one hand while i got one hand on the camera let's take a look at the controls here first of all you've got uh, brembo brakes there they have a very good feel to them again coming from that motorcycle world you can almost feel good brembo brakes with uh, steel braided lines that's what this is they just have a tremendous feel to them that's what you have on the snowmobile here uh, this uh, control here is basically what was controlling your dash right over there and then you come down to your heated grips your heated throttle uh, there's your start button also i believe throws it in reverse and then your headlights down there as well coming over here just the kill switch that heated throttle heated grips right there as well and then coming down a little bit more you do have a couple extra areas for um uh, extra switches here. So these are dummy switches where you can put them in. And then you have uh, the sport mode and eco mode. So you can just toggle that up to sport, toggle it down to eco as well. Um, and then you have a heated, um, you know, heated visor type uh, connection there. 91 octane in this turbo engine is what they recommend. And that makes sense. And then the other cool thing is you can see the uh, dash is still on this one. Sometimes they turn off a lot quicker. These dashes stay on longer. Well, you've got that tether switch right here. Now, right now it's not tethered to me, it's just tethered to the unit itself, but these keys are pretty cool. You pull them off and of course the whole thing goes. So you can uh, sync that up with yourself or connect it up with yourself. And if you're ever to fall off the unit, it's gonna pull itself off. It's the kind of thing that works really well. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't knock off when you knock it, that kind of thing, but it can pull itself off, turn the unit off, which is kind of nice to have. Of course, you got the extra grab handles up there. We kind of talked about that, but there's your general view of this thing. So again, very comfortable, but also very commanding view where you can see everything you need to see.
So as we move the camera back over there, I should also just talk again. I'm a six footer, so you can sort of see the general sense of uh, what it looks like with me on this. Plenty of room, plenty of comfort, and I have to say all of these seats, very, very comfortable. So let's talk about who this unit is for. This is not an entry level unit in any way. This is something where you're probably gonna appreciate it more if you are comfortable with adjusting the suspension, if you're comfortable with having a little extra kind of tech in here, uh, you know, that powerful turbo engine. Turbo engine does add some weight. You can also get this with a two-stroke engine. That two-stroke engine is gonna be a little bit lighter, maybe a little better for that off-trail use. To me, this still leans a little bit more on trail, but this thing's all about fun and comfort and flexibility. So again, that link system adding, allowing you to add passengers, add cargo, add those kinds of things, really makes it a flexible unit, but it's gonna give you great trail performance with that off-trail ability around the trail system that's gonna make this thing an absolute blast. And that's the thing that I think matters uh, to me the most is as you start looking at units like this, you start seeing the little things that matter, the little extra foot grips, the little extra um, you know, support pieces, the strengthening pieces, the little extra bumper rail front and rear. All those little things add a big difference to the right customer. And you'll kind of know if you're that customer or not. There's so many sleds to see in here. Another little thing I didn't mention is there's a little adjustment to the, all of these handlebars, of course, they rise up and they're adjustable, but these ones here are labeled. So you have a, you know, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, or minus one. So you can tell if it's curled towards your curled back. So if you're uh, riding with different people and you want to adjust it up to make it fit one person better than the next, or compared to the next person, you know you have it in the exact right position for that person. So a lot of flexibility here from suspension to settings to comfort, whatever you want it to be, but again, a lot of performance. So that's the general overview of this unit. If you wanna know more, make sure you let me know in the comments below. If there's things that I missed that you think I need to talk about, let me know as well. Tell me what you think of this unit as well. And again, I wanna thank Extreme Torque Motorsports for giving me complete access to all of their units here. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and we'll talk to you in the next one.